We are pulling into this quiet cove. Our Inuit guide, Leslie, thinks he sees a polar bear way back at the far end of the ice edge. It's late October, and Baffin Bay is just beginning to freeze, an important event in the life cycle of polar bears. Ice means food in the form of the small ring seal that makes up most of its diet. Seals need air, and the bears wait at the breathing holes in the ice to catch their prey. Oh my, he's coming right to our boat. He has not eaten in many months, and I'm sure he's thinking of a way to get into our boat. Polar bears have a fantastic sense of smell, constantly sampling their surroundings. Some say they can smell seal blubber many miles away. Polar bears are very patient hunters. Their paws are covered in hair, providing a layer of insulation and helping to increase traction when walking on the slippery ice. We are here in Kikitajawak, a small Inuit village on Baffin Bay, just north of the Arctic Circle. Winter temperatures drop down to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, but it is not so cold in October. Leslie knows these waters well, 
and takes us out each day on his motorized canoe to look for polar bears and other Arctic wildlife. The winter snows are late this year, but that will make it easier to spot the bears. It's cold, but the scenery around Baffin Bay is spectacular. In some spots, the bay is just beginning to freeze. It's time to stop for a break. There are fresh bear prints in the snow, and we soon spot a bear walking along the rocky ledge. He's quite far away and not coming in our direction. Most bears shy away from humans, but some can get very aggressive. Polar bears are comfortable in the water, and this mother is taking her two young cubs out for a swim. They can swim tens of miles in a day and have been spotted more than a hundred miles from shore. Polar bears don't growl. They make a hissing sound and bang their gums when they are angry. Let's back off a bit. They have webbed paws and drag their back legs behind them when they swim. Kikatajawak is a small Inuit village with a population of only 520 people. Our hosts, Leslie and Tia Nukawak, have established a small tourist business here, catering mostly to photographers who come to Baffin Bay to get close to polar bears and other wildlife. They graciously supplied us with these lined, waterproof jumpsuits. Without them, we would have been unprepared for the six hours we spent each day out on the open bay. The temperature was typically 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Lunch was hot soup, crackers, and smoked fish. Although it was cold on the water, it was very comfortable once we entered a sheltered cove. The local Inuit people hunt seal, eating the meat, and using the skins for clothing. They also hunt polar bears for food and clothing under a government supervised allotment. Diamond Lake Lodge is a 15 minute helicopter ride from Churchill. This family-owned hunting and fishing lodge plays host to polar bear enthusiasts in October and November. The lodge is located on Hudson Bay, about 25 miles north of Churchill. Hello. 
The accommodations and atmosphere at the lodge were warm and cozy. Members of the Weber family, who own the lodge, have authored several excellent cooking books. Needless to say, the food was delicious. Our group is out on the ice looking for wildlife. Our guide is looking for polar bears, and I think he sees one. He's about 100 feet away but will not approach us if we stay close together. This is very exciting. The Arctic fox is perhaps the most beautiful of all foxes, blending in well with its winter surroundings. In summer, its fur is a grayish brown. It is often seen on the ice trailing a polar bear, waiting for leftovers. It's the end of October, and the sea ice is just beginning to form. It's freezing later and thawing earlier. In fact, Hudson Bay ice has been receding at a rate of 9% per decade since 1978, and scientists suspect global warming. The bears are gathering at the edge of the bay, waiting for the sea to freeze. Polar bears spend the summer months fasting as they wait for sea ice to form. The loss of their crucial feeding period is taking a measurable toll on the health of the Hudson Bay polar bears. Martin Obert, Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources scientist, has found that since the mid-1980s, body mass of polar bears in southern Hudson Bay has dropped about 15%. The bears are getting skinnier. Climatologists have forecast that by 2070, sea ice will disappear entirely from Hudson Bay. This could be a devastating event for the several thousand polar bears that make their home here. This is a restless time for the polar bears, and these two adult males appear to be playing. Physical contact is a necessary step in determining the pecking order among local bears. This will be important once they get out on the ice and compete for food. While not actually fighting, sparring is part of the process. It does get rough, but serious physical injury is very rare.
These guys have been at it all afternoon, alternating between sparring and resting. In slow motion, it looks like a well-choreographed ballet. Polar bears open their mouths as a display of dominance. This match is a draw. This cub is 10 months old. Like all polar bears, she was born at the end of December. Although mating takes place in late spring, the fertilized eggs are not attached to the uterus wall until September. The zygotes float freely and will be reabsorbed if the mother is not healthy enough to raise cubs. In late September, one to three zygotes will attach, depending on the health of the mother. She will then enter her winter den in the snow. According to polar bear biologist Ian Sterling, polar bears may not be getting enough food these days. Several decades ago, triplet polar bear cubs were common in western Hudson Bay. Now, they're virtually non-existent. At the end of March, the mother and her cubs will come out of their den. Once the cubs are acclimated to the outside world, she will begin to hunt having not eaten for at least 10 months. She times her arrival on the ice to late spring, when the males are fat and pose little threat to the vulnerable cubs. These two cubs are close to two years old and are almost as big as the mother in the center. For at least 20 months, polar bear cubs drink their mother's milk and depend on her for survival. This season, they will hunt for themselves for the first time. Newborns are 12 to 14 inches long and weigh little more than a pound. Six out of ten polar bear cubs die in their first year. Victims of starvation, predation, or accidents. Although polar bears are generally thought of as solitary animals, physical contact is an important aspect of their social interaction. These siblings are preparing to leave their mother's side and may not see each other again for the rest of their lives. They too must practice the skills that will be important in their adult lives. Although polar bears are at the top of the Arctic food chain, they are very specialized hunters and rarely catch smaller prey. Sometimes they forage for kelp and small berries. This red fox appears to be eating a goose egg, left over perhaps when they migrated south. Red foxes are known for their cleverness. In fact, their scientific name, Vulpus vulpus, means the fox of foxes. Most of their hunting is done at night, often traveling five miles in search of prey. 
Red foxes are not picky and will eat whatever they can find or catch, dead or alive. The Arctic hare lives further north than any other hare. They live among the rocks on hillsides where they can hide from foxes, wolves, owls, and other predators. Hares eat grasses, willows, and other plants. The ptarmigan, known locally as the Arctic chicken, molts several times a year. Each new set of feathers matches the tundra, making it hard for its enemies to see it. We landed in Churchill after a three-hour charter airplane ride from Winnipeg. This wheat port on Hudson Bay is transformed into a tourist town for about six weeks in October and November when people come to see the polar bears. We were immediately transported by bus to the Tundra Buggy, which was specifically designed to permit safe viewing of wildlife on the tundra. The back platform was ideal for filming, and the open windows also provided a stable platform. We had no problem getting a clear shot of the polar bears and other Arctic wildlife. It did not take long for a polar bear to arrive. They are very curious, with no fear of humans. In fact, they are quite dangerous despite the fact that most of us do not provide enough blubber for a decent meal. The Churchill experience provides perhaps the best opportunity in the world to get close to these huge predators. That's Goliath, a mature male and one of the participants in the day-long sparring contest we filmed. He's been hanging around for a few weeks now and is always trying to get into the buggies. Standing up, he spans about 11 feet from his toes to the tip of his nose. Now this way. Now that was a great one. He sure is determined, providing a great photo opportunity. Oh, how do I look? I'm going out, you know, on a day tonight. To maximize the viewing experience, entrepreneurs built the Tundra Lodge, a train-like series of cars that is hauled out each season to the ice edge, where the bears congregate. Electricity and heat are provided by propane. There are two sleeping cars, which can accommodate up to 32 people. Each person has a single compartment, with a bunk bed and storage shelf. There is a lounge car used for reading, chatting, happy hour, and slideshows at night. Of course, we brought enough tequila and vodka to keep out the chill. Overall, the Tundra Lodge provided an excellent platform from which to film polar bears. There were so many encounters that a resting polar bear outside our window attracted little attention. These are the two older cubs that were filmed cuddling and sparring in the video. They played outside the lodge for hours.
Note the ear tag. The Churchill polar bears number about 1,000 and are the best studied polar bears in the world. Watch your fingers. Watch your fingers. The open grating under the back deck is very tempting for the bears. It's a good idea to keep your fingers out of the grate. I don't think that scared him. There are no roads leading into the town of Churchill. Rail, air, and boat provide transport to this Hudson Bay port, which began exporting grain from Western Canada in 1931. This is the polar bear capital of the world. Circulating currents in the bay cause the ice to form here first. Consequently, hundreds of bears congregate in the area during the six-week polar bear season beginning in late October. These bears are being relocated to the ice edge. They have been interned in the polar bear jail after being apprehended for unruly behavior in town. A film crew is paying the $10,000 relocation expense, and we are fortunate in the timing of our arrival in Churchill. A lot of respect for the people that work on it. A lot of tough decisions to be made. Sometimes bears have to be destroyed. Sometimes bears have to be captured. And these guys do a great job. Just a great job. So what they do is they capture bears that are a problem around the community, either with these uh, uh, culvert traps, and you may have seen them set. Then they'll be held in here for periods, uh, and maybe as much as a month, usually just a few weeks. Polar bears are the world's largest land predator, with mature males often weighing in at 1,200 to 1,500 pounds. They have a curious habit of walking in each other's bear tracks. Polar bears are ideally suited to their Arctic environment. A thick layer of blubber, up to 4.5 inches thick, provides them with such excellent insulation that their body temperature remains at 98.6, even at minus 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Their hair is wider at the top, trapping a layer of air to keep out the cold. They typically live an average of 15 to 18 years with starvation being the major cause of death. Human hunters are the bear's only enemy. Today, the major threat to the polar bear is global warming. Arctic ice is receding at an alarming rate, reducing the hunting season. We were fortunate to be able to spend time among these magnificent animals and to share that experience with you.